Well, looky what we have here. It's American Sycamore. Comes to us from our good friend, longtime viewer, longtime contributor, Tuffy Marginez. I think Tuffy told me this came from the Berkeley campus in California. It was already cut down and he scarfed up a few pieces and sent them on up to me and this is one of them. Let's take a look at it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. The piece is about seven inches this way. It's four inches this way. It's about four and a half inches wide, depending on where you measure it. I really like turning this wood. Uh, well, I really like what I get out of this wood once it's turned. Uh, it can be a kind of a problem. It, it can get a little punky in there sometimes, a little soft. You can see a little bit of deterioration here and there. But the grain is so beautiful, and it's got that spalting in it. The bark is a real pain to deal with, but once you've dealt with it, which, which involves getting a screwdriver and picking off some of the loose stuff, but then what's left, once you get it sanded up and finished, it's just gorgeous. It's, it's just a wonderful contrast with that beautiful grain. So what I'm going to do, this will be the top right here, and you can see that it's an odd-shaped piece. So I think I'm going to have my center about here, which will give me half of the piece this way by coming way over here and then the other half curves in so I'll, I'll get out here a ways but then it'll come back in again I also may trim this down on the lathe I won't trim it before I get on there I may bring the top down maybe down about in this area and then go all the way around like that it, so it, it might end up being about three and a half inches tall I'm not sure three and a half inches deep uh, just because I think I can get more wood coming down this way a larger opening or we might try something else I'm not too sure about that either look at that it's just it's just, you can tell it's just gonna be beautiful so I'm gonna drill a hole here for my woodworm screw we'll get it mounted up over here on the lathe and get to turning I think we'll just start by marking out for the tenon I think the bottom here is pretty flat if it turns out not to be, I can remark this, but I, I think it's pretty flat. I'm just going to start working on setting up that tenon, and then we'll decide what to do out this way. We're going to be turning at 650 RPM, freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. Yeah, I see the, the punkiness is with us again. That's, that's okay. We'll just live with it. You know, I, I just don't think I'm going to do any turning out here. I'm going to do a lot of sanding and removing of the, the loose bark and finishing, of course. But I'm not going to alter this outside shape. It's just too unique and wonderful. I couldn't improve on it. What would I do? What, what, how could I make that any better? I don't think it's possible. So, what does that mean? Well, it means we're almost ready for sanding, but we need to square up the sides of this tenon. So I'm going to raise my tool rest up a little bit here and use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. Now that didn't take long. Time for sanding. I spent about 20 minutes, half hour, uh, with these two tools going over the loose bark out here. And I got quite a bit of it off. Uh, there may be a tiny bit more to come. I like to leave it, if it's tight, I like to leave it because it's just a nice contrast with the natural wood grain underneath it and around it. And I'm sure in the sanding process, uh, I'll probably lose a little bit more, but there'll be plenty. 
plenty left. So speaking of sanding, I'm going to start with 80 grit on my Sandoflex. That's very coarse, way coarser than I normally do, but uh, it's quite rough out here on the edges of the remaining bark, and I'm going to smooth that out, and then I'll do 120, and then I'll do 180, and that's as fine as I'll go out, out this way, because uh, It'll, it'll smooth it out, it'll clean it up, but it'll still leave it natural looking as it is. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and I'll sand up uh, all the turn parts on the bottom. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. So that's what that looks like and I'll be doing a lot more of it and I'll come at it from this direction and that direction and that direction and that direction. Every direction I possibly can to get that smoothed out, cleaned up and looking great. Then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 380. And that'll be pretty easy. I'll do that up through 400 grit and I'll bring it back here in a bit and we'll put some, I think, sanding sealer on there and then shellac. See you in a bit. I truly wish you could feel this. It's so smooth yet has so much texture, so much compression grain in here. It, it's just, it's just remarkable. It just feels so good to touch. So this is sanding sealer, shellac based sanding sealer. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. And I like to get a base coat on before I start brushing. So I'll be doing a whole lot of brushing here in a minute. But this is gonna be, this is gonna be so beautiful. I, I can just, I can just tell. I've worked with this enough. I don't know how many pieces of this I've turned, but a few, maybe five or six, maybe. It's a little bit different than the sycamore that Valerie sends me. I'm not sure why. Tuffy calls it American Sycamore. Oh, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. And she, she sends uh, London Plain Sycamore, which is also quite nice, just different, that's all. Okay, well that looks pretty good, don't you think? And that's just the first coat. I'll put on a second coat of this. So I'll get those coats on there, and uh, then two coats of shellac. And I'll bring you back, and we'll start working on the inside. And I hope to see lots more of this spalting. And I'm sure we're going to see some of this punkiness here as well. But that's okay. That's not the first thing you see when you look at this. You see all that beautiful color and grain and it's just an amazing piece of wood. See you in a while. I've turned the piece around and have the tenon mounted up in the chuck. For you this has been a few seconds. For me this has been, I don't know, at least three weeks. Maybe three and a half, four weeks, I'm not sure, since I worked on this piece. So I'm just kind of going to give it a try today. Uh, I do have two coats of sanding sealer on there and two coats of shellac. I'm going to start hollowing it out. You can see my center is here. It looks like there's a long ways over here compared to over here, but it's, it's not quite like that because there's a drop off here. So it's really from about here, it's about as far out as I could go, to about here or something like that. I may take this down shorter to minimize this over here. This this overhang that's not really doing anything. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, we're just gonna kind of play it by ear, see what happens. We're gonna be turning at 640 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Just want to see where we are here. Yeah, see, this is going to end up looking silly like this. I think I'm going to have to take it down shorter, but I'll stick with it for a few minutes. Yep, I'm going to take this down. So 
sure is punky. Real, real punky. Now you would think that uh, soft punky wood would cut easily, but it does not. It just resists cutting. I, I don't know how else to put it. it uh, it's not a smooth cut. It's bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. But we'll get through it. It sure is punky though, isn't it? But I think, uh, I think it'll smooth up okay and look good with a finish on it. Gonna be pretty green, isn't it? I just love that. What do you think? Does this look good on there or should I cut it off? See, it's still got a little Still got a dip behind here. So if I go another quarter inch, this will be gone. It'll look more like this, I guess. Or does it look okay? Maybe it looks okay. I'm gonna go sharpen up. Yep, yep, I'll be right back. There we go. I wonder if I can pick the speed up any. Uh, about 7.40. I'm sheer scraping, trying to clean up my cuts a little bit. So I'm just using this bottom, bottom part of the cutter right down here. This is not touching, nothing else is touching, just this bottom part of the wing right here. And that did a lot of good, a lot of good. Now I just could not get it that smooth with a round nose scraper. This is way sharper than you can get a scraper. So I'm actually quite pleased with that. In fact, I think we might be done. Uh, okay, well, time for sanding. Well, this shouldn't be too difficult. I'm gonna use a two inch disc starting at 80 grit and I'll work up through 400. I'm going to have the lathe spinning forward at about 380 and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Yeah, it's not going to be too bad at all. I'll bring you back here in just a little bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, I've been gone so long, everything dried up on me. I gotta, gotta use a fresh rag here and a fresh brush. It all hardened up. I guess that means if you use it regularly, once or twice a week, maybe uh, that keeps it fresh. Because I, I know I use these same rags for a couple of months usually, I would say. Same with the brush. And speaking of brush, I'm gonna have to brush this whole thing because there's bark inclusions and whatnot. But I always like to get a base coat on there first. That keeps it from leaving brush strokes behind. At least it helps. I'll come behind this with the, the rag with fresh sanding sealer on it to ensure we don't have any brush strokes. It's just amazing to me how punky this was and how uh, how smooth 
I was able to get it. A testament to the wood and the grain, not necessarily my work. Although I did work at it. I got to be careful around this edge. I don't want to, I don't want to come out here where I already have it all finished up. And now more on the rag to wipe up those brush strokes. So this is the first of two coats of this sanding sealer and then two coats of shellac and I'll get that all done and I'll bring you back here in a bit and we will take off the tenon. See if I can remember how to do that. But it's going to be looking pretty good. Looks pretty good already, right? See you in a bit. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. It's got a non-slip surface on it. I'm going to place the bowl over that and bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference so I can just drive my live center into that and that'll help center it on that block of wood. And I'll bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up. I'll hold my thumbnail against the edge of the tenon, see if it's running true, and it's pretty darn close. I'll turn the speed up to about 550 RPM. I'm gonna grab a 3/8 inch bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. And I like to check for clearance, so I'm just going to place my the shaft of my bowl gouge across the bottom here and look for a gap. Make sure I've got a good gap there, and I do. So that means this is above the base, so it'll set nice and flat, and my work looks good. I'll just keep making that a little bit smaller. And it's pretty small, so I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM. And I'm going to use a swept back bowl gouge so that I can get in there a little bit closer. And just keep working it away. Now that's quite small. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM. And I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch, pressure towards the headstock, and when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Like that. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd truly appreciate that. That'd be really helpful to me and my channel. Thank you very kindly. Especially lately when I haven't been able to put out a video very regularly. It's been a while, hasn't it? Well, here it is. One American Sycamore Bowl in the books. I just love it. I just love it. I'm, I'm so glad that it turned out well without any issues for me. I'm, I'm as punky as that was I wish you could feel it. It's so smooth now. I'm not saying there isn't any punkiness left. There's a little bit over here but it, it, it also is smooth but you can see it. It's just it's just there but it's not bad. Not bad at all. And uh, the inclusions in there the grain is beautiful. I thought this I thought this was a uh, tool mark right here because it goes in a circle and I sanded and sanded and it wouldn't come out and I couldn't feel it but it sure looked like a tool mark to me but then I noticed that it comes out here to the edge and then I noticed that it comes out here to the other edge so that's just that's just part of the grain of the wood no wonder I couldn't sand it out I'm glad I finally quit trying and and if you could feel the outside of this oh my gosh there's so much to feel. You just truly can't appreciate the piece until you touch it. And look at that. Look at that wrinkly grain, that compression grain. Look at that. That would have been such a mistake to turn that away. Couldn't duplicate that for any amount of money or time or effort. Yep, yep, it's a beauty. And there's the bottom all finished up. I know you can barely read it, but it's got my name and American Sycamore. And who do we have to thank for this? Tuffy Marginez. 
Thank you, my friend, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I try to put out regular videos, although not always. And I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.